I apologize. We're, we're, I have to get to Annapolis for an important meeting with, with the president of, of, of the Senate. But it, it, this is such an important issue, and it's a tragedy, and it's, a, and, and it's unfortunate. But as um, some of the speakers have mentioned before, we, you know, part of our job is to make sure that this doesn't happen. And my commitment is to try to make sure that the laws that are in the books are enforced and try to make sure that our Department of Labor and Licensing in the state of Maryland is making sure that things like this are not going to be happening in the state of Maryland. And that's my commitment because at the end of the day, uh, we should not be cutting corners and putting you and your families in danger and putting all of us in danger just to, just to make more money. And that's what it comes down to is to make more money. And unfortunately, we have companies who, uh, as I think Mr. Ojito mentioned, who don't get the message w once. You know, they shut them down and pe they, 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 you know, they reopen again. And I think that's part of our jobs to make sure if you're going to, especially if you're going to be taking jobs um, from our state government, from our federal government, that you're not putting the lives of our people in danger. And I I'm glad to see that we have uh, uh, what I think is some of the workers here and I, you know, and I'm, and I'm thinking that I, you know, we are here for you. We're going to continue to work for you, and I commend you for the work that you, you, you undertook, but for giving a face to the issue. And I, and and for your work, I think many of the workers are going to benefit from them. And it's our job to make sure that things like this do not happen um, tomorrow, do not happen in the near future. And I, I stand here with the Mid Atlantic laborers and thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to be here. And we're gonna to work together to, to find solutions and to find, um, and, and, and to, if, if need to, criminalize this activity. Because if people need to go to jail to send a message, then we, that's what we need to do. We need to put people in jail. Thank you very much. From the moment these workers began their asbestos training to the point when they received their last paycheck, they, were regularly, they regularly encountered abuse and a blatant disregard for their safety. Because of the hazard that asbestos and lead poses, federal regulations require that anyone working in an industry must be trained and licensed before being legally able to work. Unfortunately, many workers complain that the training centers as woefully deficient and outright fraudulent in their training practices. The two most utilized for-profit training centers in the area did the minimum to prepare these workers. Workers complain that instead of being in a class for the required 32 hours, the classes started late ended early and they were given generous breaks in between. To cover up for this deficient training, workers were given the answers to the 50 question OSHA mandated multiple choice exam. Again, the, the workers were given the answers to the exam. This is proof that you understood the course and knew how to work and handle it safely. Now think about that. How can a worker expect to handle hazardous materials safely when the training they received was so glaringly inadequate? And these violations only speak of the workers who received training prior to doing asbestos and lead abatement. Many workers testified that they, they were told to do abatement work without a license and without a real knowledge of the safety procedures that they were to follow. It was understood that if you wanted to keep working, you kept your mouth shut. Um, my, new, my new career now and my new life calling has been to give a voice to the people this industry has been oppressing and abusing. The people right here in this room right now. It's given a voice to the people that the, the women that are single mothers right now, to the migrant workers who are looking for a way to feed their families and work hard. It's, it's, this industry makes victims of even like ex-convicts that are just trying hard to give back to society and earn a decent living. Um, this, this industry grabs illiterate workers who don't know how to read or write, but can work really hard with their hands and puts them to work in an industry that they can't understand. It's a, very, it's a profits over people industry and it treats workers as, as if they're disposable. Now, a lot of the conditions I ran into were, are very, very hor horrendous, and a lot of you would be appalled to hear the facts. I mean, I'm talking about improper disposal of lead. I'm talking about companies making workers do demo on walls with live circuits in them to cut corners. I'm talking about no breaks doing, during the kind of work that OSHA refers to as heavy work all while wearing a plastic, a plastic Tyvek suit that I like to call a sweatsuit and about five pounds of safety gear on your head. This is also done in a room that has no air circulation, in fact has negative air pressure, and, and um, it's pretty much done in order to keep fibers from going in the air. So it's pretty much a vacuum sealed room. I'm talking about 10 jobs this year that I've been to, six of them federal projects. None of them have a decontamination shower. 
and none of them plan to put one in. I'm talking about little or no training for these workers and little or no protective equipment. These workers are pretty much sent in their bare bones and made to do the work however they can do it. A lot of times these workers don't even know that they're even working with hazardous materials. Um, we went into this job and we thought we were doing cl regular clean and paint, but the reality was much, much different. We were actually doing lead abatement. So we were instructed that we were doing lead and we said we're not licensed, but the supervisor said it didn't matter. So we set up poly, just like we would in an asbestos job, and we took scrapers and scraped this lead paint off the walls. Scraped the lead paint off the walls and took a, water, uh, took a sprayer with water and sprayed down all the machines in the room and all the walls and got all the, all the little paint chips up. So we bagged up this water and then were instructed to pour, pour it down the drain. Now, not being licensed and have, having never dealt with lead remediation, um, we believed that this was the right process. But one day, the supervisor came to us and said, hey, be careful, don't let anyone see you doing that. Of course, I asked him why, and then he told me because it was illegal. I, so in, in my despair, I asked him, hey, if it's illegal, why are we doing it? And he said, well, it's in a hurry and we're tired, we're trying to get out of here. After that project, I'll, I'll tell you about an, another project. This one really makes me very sick, and a lot of the workers are here today. And this job was at the Armed Forces Retirement Home here in D.C., this job was, we were supposed to do a demolition. Also, we weren't told there was asbestos abatement. We were told there was demolition, and we were sent in to do this demolition. So we came in, and they told us, okay, you're to take these sledgehammers and break these walls down to, find, to expose the asbestos pipes. The problem was that the asbestos pipes were right up against the brick walls, and as we were smashing these, these walls with the sledgehammers, the, the bricks were hitting into the asbestos pipes, disturbing the already disturbed pipes, and causing these fibers to become airborne. The entire job site was ridiculous. You can see it all through the hallways, the fibers. We took pictures and documented everything. Um, so there were, and also we had no suits, no respirators. I mean, we, we thought it was like a plain demolition job. None of the workers, and we were all sweaty, gasping for air. It was very hard work in a very hot place and with no, no way to decontaminate yourself at the end. I still remember, I, I left work, and I was riding with this other worker. His name's Romeo, but it doesn't matter. Um, and we're riding home, and we we're talking about the fibers stuck in our arm. You can see the white fibers all over us, the white dust, white powder. We had one worker who, who told the supervisor, this is illegal the way you're doing this abatement, and was fired on the spot. Then another worker said, well, he's not going to take it, and he again reported it. This time, the inspectors had no choice but to come out again and close it for a final time. Another company ended up getting the job and doing the abatement properly. But again, what happened to the 30 workers that were on this project? All unemployed with no job. I, I, I do want to thank you all for your time, and I really hope that we can find a way to solve these problems and we can work together in this because we're all here and this is our community. These are your neighbors. This, these are mothers in your, in your area, and we really need the help. These are the workers of America. I've been working in a best industry for six years. And uh, I'm right here at this meeting tonight and uh, today because uh, I want to make sure that uh, the kind of help we're trying to get, uh, it can come true. So uh, we're trying to back everybody up. We're trying to be against these uh, situations because some of these companies is trying to, uh, even that they don't want to do it, but they're doing it. they destroying people's uh, uh, health, destroying people's uh, family. And uh, that's not what we want. All we want is trying to start this uh, and make these companies to uh, do the job the way it's supposed to be and start contaminating people inside the containment and outside the area. Thank you.